It's been nearly two months since the events of Frog Week 2024 had taken place, and the revelation of the passing of the female American toad Ace, who is the matriarch of the 242 gallon and the mascot of all of Woods and Forests media, as well as my best friend. With her passing, it leaves a large void inside the enclosure, and for this episode, we're going to talk about who was trying to take her place and fill the void of being the dominant animal inside the PA Woods Vivarium. This is the story of the end of the summer for this tank. As you can see, the American Toad Baldwin, who we originally thought was going to be the dominant animal inside the enclosure, after these scenes has been missing in action for almost the entire month of August. With his absence and Ace no longer living inside the enclosure, it was the perfect time for an animal like Esther, the female wood frog, to try to rise up and seize control of this ecosystem. After all, Esther has the longest tenure living inside the enclosure, dating all the way back to last October. It's safe to say, Esther, of course, knows her way through the woods. Up until this past June, Esther would think twice before she would come out in the open and even sit close to the target where all of the frogs and toads are target trained. The reason why is because I release the majority of the feeder insects on this target and allow the frogs and toads to come here and catch the insects on the target. This avoids them eating any kind of debris and it's also a very easy place for them to learn this is where the food's going. With Ace out of the picture, Esther wanted to assert herself at the head of the table and make sure she got her place in line to eat before anybody else would even think to challenge her again. But Esther wasn't foolish. She understood that just like out in the wild, our PA Woods vivarium was also always changing. There was always going to be new plants or new insects or even more ambassador animals joining the fold. With that being the case, how was Esther going to do with the introduction of another female American toad? Just like we promised in Frog Week 2024, Junior checked all of the boxes off. She was dewormed, she was healthy, and ready to go in and venture into a new world. There were so many questions we had. How old truly was Junia? How many times has she seen a wild frog or toad? Was she going to have a mean streak like Ace and Navi, or was she going to coexist even more peacefully with the wood frogs and American toads that live in the woods? I tend to get very emotional talking about the past for Junia. She at least lived inside a 10 gallon aquarium for five years or more. We're truly not sure how old she is, but she lived in a 10 gallon aquarium withering away for many years. Then after she came into our care last year, she went into a 40 gallon, and then she made the trip into a 67 gallon. And now she's worked all the way up to a 242 gallon Pennsylvania Woodland Vivarium. The very first night of placing her inside this enclosure, it was nothing short of thrilling, emotional, and fulfilling to see an enclosure that I had been building for five years was appreciated and marveled by an animal who truly deserved to live inside this enclosure and also deserved way more. But this was the best that I could offer Junior, and seeing her truly marvel at the size and the opportunity in front of her to live inside this enclosure was one of the greatest feelings that I've had in a very long time. And what an emotional roller coaster it was to see a female American toad enter the landscape once again and possibly take the top spot inside the woods vivarium. She wasn't going to be Ace. She wasn't going to fill those shoes. There's nobody that's going to fill the shoes of Ace but she could be the best version of Junia that she's ever been. And all of us in the Woods and Forest community want nothing more than to see Junia thrive inside this enclosure because Lord knows she deserves it. Through everything that she's been through in the wild, to being captured at Cal U, to now living inside one of the most amazing American toad enclosures in the United States. She's truly come a long way. Now the question's going to be, 
Is she going to claim the top spot? Or is she going to face a lot more pushback? Remember, she's never encountered an American toad or wood frog since she's been in captivity. So this was all a learning experience. A hierarchy was not something that Junya was used to. She was used to dominating and living on her own, doing everything on her own terms. Junya does not have the only noteworthy story inside the PA Woods Vivarium. As we covered moments ago, Esther also has an equally deserving story, and it was finally her time to seize control of this enclosure, and she wasn't going to let someone who looked like an ace imposter stop her from accomplishing this mission. In the beginning, we were afraid that Junia might try to eat Esther because she had absolutely no idea what a wood frog was. We gave it a couple of days and things finally settled down. She stopped trying to eat Esther at least, and everything has worked out ever since. However, these aren't the only two stories inside the enclosure that we're going to cover. Finally, we're going to talk about who claimed the top spot for the summer inside the PA Woods Vivarium. You could see a very unique looking American toad with very dark eyes and a very dark complexion. I theorized that Ananias might have been melanistic when he was a lot younger, just from the way he looks. His eyes are always this color and usually he's even darker than what he appeared on the screen. Now, Ananias might have the most impressive story that I've ever seen for a male American toad. There's never been a male American toad that took the throne while a female American toad was also in the same vicinity. However, at least for August and September, Ananias has claimed the top spot. When Junia first saw Ananias, she ran for the hills. She actually ran into the background and looked terrified. We have no idea why she was so spooked to see him. Ananias is a very different male American toad than Wellsboro. If you can remember, the golden American toad, who was a massive bully towards the other frogs and toads he lived with, would always use force to get his way. But Ananias has this cool, collected demeanor, but he has this confidence about him that it's hard to explain. It took nearly a week for Junia to overcome her fear of Ananias, but once she finally did, she started looking at him like a notable adversary, like a rival similar to Ace and Wellsboro. Female American toads will strike another animal inside their enclosure to establish dominance and to mark their territory. We just had one of our biggest questions answered, whether or not Junia was going to try to dominate and bully the other frogs and toads inside the ecosystem, just like Navi and Ace before her. She truly underestimated Ananias. All of her territorial behavior and dominant tactics fell on deaf ears because Ananias did not retaliate and he looked like he could care less about her striking at him. Ananias was not phased by Junior attacking him or showcasing any territorial behavior or dominance. He seemed like he truly could care less and all he did moving forward was outcompete her. He was the first to get to the prey items, he was the most alert, aware, the most calm, cool, and collected, and the most strategic whenever he would catch prey. But that's to be understood. He was a wild toad, whereas Junia has for many years been a captive one. So she seemed to be a little bit outclassed in this situation. All of the frogs and toads live inside a vivarium, a living ecosystem with plants and animals. There's a lot of creatures that break down the soil and live inside of it. And what you're looking at is a night whenever I introduced European earthworms from Josh's frogs into the enclosure. And Ananias was taking advantage of all of the prey items in front of him, picking off all of the earthworms strategically. It was truly incredible to see him eat these earthworms because prior to this I had never fed Ananias earthworms before, so watching him eat them would have been almost a sneak peek as to what he would have done in the wild if he encountered them.
Let's sit back and watch as Ananias continues to hunt down European earthworms on this night inside the PA Woods Vivarium. Now it was Junia's turn to hunt the European earthworms on her side of the tank during this night. Let's observe how she handled the same situation as Ananias. One of the added features that we incorporated into this enclosure was night vision, giving us the opportunity to utilize security cameras to see how the animals are doing late at night and also at times when nobody's around to film. Check out some of the amazing scenes we've gotten from August through early September of the 242 gallon. Of course, this is going to star Ananias Jr., and you'll even have to keep your eyes peeled to try to find Esther. But let's check this out together.
This is by far one of my favorite scenes filming for the entire series up to this point. It's truly incredible to watch the American Toads move from one side of the enclosure to the next. I bet you guys didn't think American Toads utilize over six feet of space, but they do. And I can't wait to talk about that and focus even more on the stories surrounding these animals, whether it's Junia, Ananias, Esther, or Baldwin. I can't wait for the upcoming Woods Uncut storyline for this year to highlight all of their journeys, and I can't wait to share that with all of you. So let's get ready to like and subscribe and share so we can enjoy more content from the Woods Uncut. This was the Woods Uncut, the end of summer. Please like and subscribe and share with your friends, and we'll see you in the next one. Thanks.